information it's everywhere if you haven't noticed a wide source of information is available right at your fingertips with the use of the internet suddenly everyone is a professional researcher and there's nothing wrong with that however not all the information you read on the internet is factual <gasps> what so how can we better our research skills when there's so many bogus sources it's simple just use your brain A huge benefit of living in this time period is that we literally have answers whenever we want them. The drawback is that there is so much information that it's hard to know the difference between fact and opinion. So let me tell you my strategy on how to find sound information when doing research. I should note that I am mainly talking about researching health and body related topics, but I'm sure this tactic can be useful for researching any topic. Get ready to use your brain. First is understanding basic science or facts. This is key because there's so much information out there that just flat out ignores basic science. By basic science, I'm referring to the fundamental things that the scientific community has agreed on. Things like different mechanisms of the body, how water works, basic chemistry, basic biology, etc. It is a foundation through which we filter everything we hear or read. Knowing the simple ways in which things work will help you to easily decipher if larger claims have any basis or not. For example, if you're researching a claim and this claim is referring to a specific basic science, but the claim in the basic science contradicts, then you can determine the claim to be faulty. But let's face it, many of us don't really know basic science. In this case, that basic science we run into should become our new topic of research. For example, if the claim is referring to this basic science and you aren't sure how this basic science really works, you should now apply the brain research strategy to understand the basic science before moving on with the claim. Next is references. Ever heard of the phrase, consider the source? It's actually pretty wise advice because there's so many sources of information out there. If we believed everything we hear, we would be super confused. You can find a ton of information for or against just about any topic under the sun. But not every source is created equal. Here is my list of types of sources that I am more inclined to trust. Number one is research studies. A quick Google search of your topic plus PubMed will get you started in learning what scientific backing your topic has behind it. But make sure you read the study. Many times the title of the study does not represent what the conclusion of the study is. And don't stray away from this type of reading because it's too hard to understand. Look up words you don't know and hang in there. I also try to consider the number of studies a topic has backing it. This can be a way to determine the legitimacy and influence of a topic. Two is academic sources like Harvard Health, etc. Number three is medical resources like the Mayo Clinic. Number four is governmental or non-governmental health agencies like the WHO or the National Institute of Health. Number five is articles that source their information, especially those who include links to those sources so that you can review. Look at those sources. That is what they are there for. Sometimes linked sources don't actually match up with the information that is presented, so verify them. So obviously these sources are completely capable of getting it wrong. But the important part is that they are held at a higher standard for what they publish. These sources might actually face backlash if what they put out is not scientifically founded. So you can be somewhat sure that what they say has been thoroughly examined before being published. Now for my list of references you may want to be skeptical of. Social media. Shocker, I know. People's opinions, doctor's opinion, separate from supported research. Books without legitimate sources. Videos without supported sources. Testimonies or anecdotal evidence. Articles without sources. Documentaries without supporting sources. A company's website or social media site. Remember, they are selling a product. So including sources should be their first priority to gain the trust of their customers. I am also more likely to be suspicious of in-house or independent studies done by companies as well. Don't be afraid to ask someone for their sources. If they're basing their facts off of real science, they will always be happy to provide sources because it helps their credibility. Speaking of asking, the next step is to ask why. In research, you should question everything. Asking the right questions is the best way to get the right answers. 
Asking questions about what you read and learn not only help you gain a deeper understanding of the topic, but it can give you a better perspective on the topic as a whole. Having questions is a good way to not get caught up in the emotion of the presenter. Sometimes the people we hear information from are so convincing that it's hard not to believe them. People can be very passionate about things, even if those things are not backed by any valid evidence. Passion can be a really good thing, but also something you should be careful of. One important question to ask is why the other side thinks the way they do. For example, while researching a topic which I agree with, I learn a group of people do not agree with the topic. My next step is to research the topic from the group of people to verify if they have any basis for their conclusions. This is called looking at things from another perspective or angle. Which brings us to the next step, include angles. Just because one aspect of the topic you're researching checks out with science doesn't mean the entire claim will. You should try to look at every aspect while researching and try to think outside the box. The truth can be complicated, and most of the time, the inaccuracies are hidden deep within seemingly solid information. For example, I'm researching about a product that is said to have a certain effect because of a certain ingredient. The ingredient has legitimate science behind it and checks out with basic science. However, upon further research, the product does not have a sufficient amount of that ingredient to produce the effect. So then you can conclude that that product is not a sufficient way to obtain the effect of the ingredient. The last step, and probably the most important step, is to never be 100% sure. Because there are so many angles and so many questions and so many sources, it's hard to ever be completely confident on an opinion. Always keep an open mind and willingness to learn more about a topic. In fact, the way to know if you're correct about something is trying to figure out if you're wrong. Be aware of your biases, which tempts you to only look for information that supports what you want to believe. Not only is this step important for evaluating your own personal opinions, but it is also a good reference for the research that you are doing. When researching something about health, the body, and science, legitimate authorities on these topics should not be using absolutes. Saying things like cure, 100%, proven, always, never, should be red flags when doing research. Obviously, common sense comes into play here. Now you might be thinking, well geez, that's a lot of work just for some research. You see, that's the point. This is what it takes to really know the ins and outs of what you're looking for. And even with all of that, the last point is still not to ever be 100% sure on what you're researching. Once you start diving into this level of research, you really learn that the more you know, the more you realize how much you don't know. So in this age of opinions, it might be wise for all of us to take a step back and use our brains. Do you find this strategy helpful? Be sure to let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. If you are enjoying H2 Minutes and want to see it continue, please support us through our Patreon account. And that's your dose of H2 and a whole bunch of two minutes.